Good morning, party people, and welcome to Office Hours, the online show where I take your questions from Poll Gab and I answer them, and usually I aim for around a minute per answer. I do that so that I can publish them on TikTok easily, Instagram, Shore Reels, things like that. Um, but I got three questions that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on here today. So this office hour stream is only going to hit three questions. Not necessarily that they're good or bad questions. They just take a little bit more time to answer. And I don't have training courses that I can just go point you at. So let's go dig in. The first one is from a regular viewer, My T Got Cold, who says, if storage is no issue, do I need to worry about the size of query store? It's going to hit 10% of the size of my largest database. And then the last sentence of the question is where things get really tricky. He says, I have no interest in changing query capture mode away from all or changing my retention period. I'm going to make you a sales pitch. You want to change query capture mode away from all because if the size of query store is going up beyond, say, 10% of your largest database, what's happening is, is your workload has all kinds of unparameterized queries in it, like select star from fans where creator name equals Lady Gaga or creator name equals Brent Ozar. If the app isn't parameterizing those queries, then your query store is going to blow up with every single possible parameter. Query store doesn't group those together for you. Query store sees them all individually. That's not a weakness of query store. We have the same exact problem in the plan cache. So I would argue that that data is not doing you any good. You don't really want to go, well, you know what I'd like to see is I'd like to see last Thursday at 6 p.m. all of the people who selected fans for creator Lady Gaga. You don't want to do that because you're going to have all kinds of these individual query plans that you're not aggregating together to see the overall big picture. This is one of the reasons why every best practices document out there, every training course, whatever, will tell you don't set query store that way. Now, you've decided that you want to do it the way that everyone tells you not to do. I don't blame you. I make bad decisions from time to time myself. But the thing is, and I, I'd say I, I do blame you for query store capture mode equals all, that's, that's a really hell of a bad idea. But the thing why you're not going to find any good advice out on there about whether or not that's safe to run is that no one's been crazy enough to do that for an extended period of time. My guess is that you're probably going to see performance issues when you go to query, query store, and you're like, I don't care, I got all the time in the world. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised if SQL Server ran into performance issues when it was trying to query query store. Like if you're doing things like forcing execution plans, if it has to go look up past execution plans when it's dealing with adaptive memory grants in 2022, uh, parallelism feedback, all that kind of thing. So essentially, you're building a data warehouse full of stuff that you can guarantee you'll never query, but you still have to sift through some of that depending on what the system's trying to do. So would I worry about the size of query store? Yes. And you ask for my expert opinion, I wouldn't set query capture mode equals all. You're the one who asked for my opinion. It's your own fault that you got a terrible answer. Next up, DBA says, for a high activity table, is it worth updating stats at a higher percentage just for auto update to resample at a lower rate within an hour? Okay, you're asking a few different questions in here. Let's stop and hit the most important one. If your statistics are updating within an hour of them being sampled or being updated, What's happening is, is that your SQL Server is detecting a large number of modified rows, and that's what's kicking off the automatic stats update. Forget the sampling rate here for a second. 
Let's take the Stack Overflow Users table. The Users table, if you've watched any of my demos, you'll probably remember has a last activity date column. Every time people click around in Stack Overflow, they hit web pages, Stack Overflow is updating that last activity date column. So that number or that date churns constantly. It's constantly changing. And it looks like the user's table is having a high number of modified rows, when in reality, it doesn't really have a high modified number of rows. So should you have automatic updating of st uh, statistics on for a table like that? Probably not. If it's getting updated every hour, you're probably seeing blocking around that statistics update. You're probably seeing unstable query plans. So you probably would want to turn off automatic update stats on that table. So you might say, well, wait a minute, I need accurate plans. Well, sure you do. But do you need them on last access date? Do you really need an exact number of rows that are going to come back for one particular last access date range? You're probably not querying by last access date all that often. So you could probably get by with stats updated once a day or once a week. Take a column like display name. The shape of statistics for something like display name is fairly constant. If you didn't update that statistic for a month straight and people were still signing up for Stack Overflow, it's not like your top display names would really change all that much. It's not like tomorrow, StackOverflow.com is having a sign up uh, uh, campaign saying, everyone named Brenda, sign up today. And then all of a sudden, Brenda's this huge outlier that we've never seen before. So getting those statistics updated in most cases is kind of overkill. You could probably get by with stats updates once a week. There is an exception. The exception, the classic example of it, is sales date. What happens is people are constantly querying the sales that were done recently. How much did we sell in the last hour? How much did we sell in the last week? In that case, if SQL Server hasn't been smart enough to catch that it's a continuously ascending key, Google for the SQL Server ascending key problem to learn more about that. If SQL Server hasn't figured out that it's an ascending key, then yeah, you're probably going to get bad stats on it. But at the same time, it's probably not going to matter whether you update stats every day or every hour, it's probably not going to be updated enough for the end users who really want accurate stats. So for most of your columns, the distributions change on a daily basis doesn't really matter that much. And when it does matter a whole lot, stats probably are never going to be up to date enough to deal with it anyway. I'm not saying you shouldn't update stats. You absolutely should update stats. I prefer once a week. There are cases where I've, I've done it as often as once a day. But in a large, mature data warehouse, you can usually get by for once a month, if that, and then only update stats on targeted tables, targeted columns, on things like sales date, more frequently where it makes sense. And then we'll do one more. The other one here, David asks, um, says, uh, I took over for an idiot who set up every database to have four transaction log files per database. I've tried everything I know to remove those files, but it errors out every time. I've never had to deal with it before in my career. I've tried some things with no success. David, I'll tell you a piece of advice that will really help your career. When you hit an error, say what the error message is. I know it sounds unusual. You've never thought about that before. But the thing is, those of us who have to troubleshoot the errors that you're having, it makes a whole lot of difference for us what error it is that you're receiving. Maybe you're trying to shrink a log file that doesn't exist. Maybe you're trying to drop a log file where that's where the active part of the log is right now. Maybe you get a permissions error, but you'll go a whole lot farther in life if when you get an error, you tell people what that error is. 
It's amazing how many times in my life I've had to have this conversation. I mean, I've been doing this stuff for over a couple of decades now. And it's easy for me to assume that everyone else knows the same basic lessons that I do. But I forget that a lot of y'all are starting from the ground up every day. This might be David's first job in technology. David, here's the thing. Right now, the idiot isn't the person with the four log files. It's the person who didn't know to send me the message. And with that, I will say goodbye for this Office Hours, and I'll see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.